Good afternoon. Today we're going to talk about transformation of logarithmic functions. And by the end of this lesson, what we're hoping to do is identify how logarithmic function transformations are different from other functions, most specifically our exponential functions. In this first box, we have a drawing of the parent graph of a logarithmic function. And it turns out um, that there are lots of different parent functions for logarithmic um, for, for logarithms, just depending on what the base is. This particular example is a picture of a log base two of x, and that would be the parent function. And if you remember from previous lessons, transformations can change the shape by making it compressed or stretched, and transformations can move it up or down, left or right, and additionally, they can be reflected over the x-axis. I'm going to step down just a little bit. I'm going to apologize because I didn't change the word exponential to logarithmic, but I just want to go over the rules of transformations that we've talked about before. So to refresh your memory, if there is a value, a number, in front of the function name, in this case log, then this value is going to be a vertical stretch or compression. The B represents the base in this case. Remember that the H is the horizontal shift, left or right, and insiders lie. So if this reads negative three, then I'm moving in a positive direction three units. And lastly, the K is the vertical transformation up or down. When we think about transformations, we know that A and K, being vertical trans transformations, will change the Y values of the ordered pair compared to the parent function. And our horizontal trans transformation will affect x value. Okay, so let's keep that knowledge in our heads and look at this parent function. There are, with all logarithmic functions, two very important, important points to, rem to know and to remember. There will always be a point one zero before any transformations occur. So this is a point in the parent function. And there will also be a point base comma one, and that is also a characteristic of every parent function. And then if I'm changing, if I have an A or a K value, that's going to change my X value. And if I have an H value, that's going to change my Y, my X values. Logarithmic functions have vertical asymptotes. Remember, that's the line you can get close to, but can't touch in all parent functions, because parent functions have no horizontal transformation our vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals zero. I'm just going to highlight that rather sloppily so that you can see that that is our vertical asymptote. The domain and range of logarithmic functions are a little interesting. Because I have a vertical asymptote, my horizontal transformation will dictate the bound of my domain. In this case, my domain never my x values never go past the vertical line x equals zero. So my values will approach zero, never touch it, but they can get larger forever. If I'm thinking of range, I can go down forever and I can go up forever. So I'm gonna say it's negative infinity to infinity. That's because there is no horizontal asymptote with logarithmic functions. Some logarithmic functions are log base two of x. This one's a friendly one to graph. And log base 10 of x. This one is actually so friendly that it's often called a common log. And it is written without the 10. Next, we're asked to graph a logarithmic function. I, and, and if I look at the example that we're given, we're given a, a, logarithmic a logarithmic function that has had some transformations applied to it. In order for me to get a good idea of what this graph is going to look like, I need to first understand what the parent graph looks like. The parent function is log base 10 of x. And if I think about those two points that I need to know, I know that I'm going to graph 1, 0, and I'm going to graph my base, comma, 1. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on the graph real quick so that I can see what the parent function looks like. One, zero, 
oxygen and on and 10 one. So what I notice about the parent function for log base 10 is that it's a pretty flat graph. And so you'll forgive my graphing skills. They're pretty weak. But I think the graph is going to look something like that. Because there is no horizontal transformation, I know that my asymptote is going to be at x equals zero. I'm going to sketch that in. If there was a horizontal transformation, that would affect my asymptote. This is just the parent function, remember? Okay, so I can use my parent function to help me figure out how to graph this transformation. I know that five is my a value, and I know there is no horizontal transformation. So if I'm thinking Harry style rocks V next, there's no horizontal transformation. It's a vertical stretch by five. So make sure y'all can actually see this again. Okay, so it is a horizontal, uh, a vertical trend, vertical stretch by five, and a vertical translation down four. So this is my k value. I'm going to put down four here. So what I can do is I can apply these transformations to the two ordered pairs that I already know. So I'm going to do the stretch first because that's what Harry Styles Rocks Phoenix suggests that I should do. So if I take this original point, one comma zero, and I'm going to multiply the y value times five, then my new value is still going to be one comma zero, zero times five is zero. Let's see. And then I need to do one more transformation. I now need to shift my graph down four. That changes my x value. So from here, I'm going to subtract four. My new, I said x value, I meant y value. My new y value is negative four. Nowhere did I change my x values because I don't have any horizontal stretch compression or trans transformation, translation. Okay, so here's my new point on my graph. I'm going to graph this one in pink. I'm going to go over one, but this time I'm going to go down negative four. I need another point, obviously. So I'm going to go with this one, 10 comma one. And I'm going to apply the same transformations. It's a vertical stretch by five. So I'm going to multiply by five, my y value only. One times five is five. And now I need to apply my, whole, my vertical translation down four. So I'm going to subtract four from the y value only. And that gives me a value of one. And so I can see that my next point that I'm going to be able to graph in this transformation is over 10, up one. There are lots of points in between these two that are helpful. You can use Desmos is just the best thing since sliced bread to help you visualize what this graph could look like. But graphing these points and making a conjecture about what the shape of the graph looks like is more than enough for me. I notice because there is no vertical transformation in this new function that my domain is still going to remain the same as it was with my parent function or zero comma infinity. My range is an easy one. My range will always be negative infinity to infinity unless there's some other outside constraints being placed upon my function. Okay, so that's an example of how we can use our two known points from a parent function, apply the transformations to discover a couple of new points, and then make a sketch of the new graph. All right, let's look at another example. In this case, I'm gonna ask you to graph with me three of base two of x minus four. The first thing I need to do is identify the parent function, which I've done as being log base two of x. The two points I need to know are gonna be one zero and my base comma one. I go ahead and graph these two points, just so I have a reference point for my graph over two up one, 
And he's going to look something like this. The parent function has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. And if I think about trans the transformations being applied to this function, I'll notice that this also has the same vertical asymptote because there is no horizontal transformation. Before I start doing my actual graphing of this new function, I need to identify what the translations and transformations are. There is no horizontal transformation. That means my domain and my asymptotes have not changed. No horizontal. I'm just going to write this so we have it as a reference. The next thing I notice is that there is a vertical stretch by three. There is no reflection in this graph, but there is a, a vertical translation down four. So these are the two transformations that I need to apply to my parent function points to determine some new points that I can graph. I'm gonna start with the point one comma zero. I'll do that over here, one comma zero. I'm gonna first apply the vertical stretch. So I'm gonna multiply the y value times three because we know that vertical transformations change the y's. That gives me one comma zero because zero times three is still three. And then I need to apply my vertical translation down four. And I'm going to subtract four from here. And that gives me the point one negative four. So that is the first point that I can graph. I need a second one though. I'm going to take the po point two comma one. I can write that. I'm going to apply my vertical stretch by multiplying by three. 1 times 3 is going to give me 3. And now I need to apply my vertical translation down 4. So this one I'm going to encroach in some space over here and I'm going to subtract 4. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So my new ordered pair is 2, negative 1. So now I have two points that I can plot that have had the transformation applied to them. Let's do that. Over one, down negative four, and over two, down negative one. So my new function is gonna look something like this. And again, you can pull up Desmos and And when I do that, I notice that I have created a misshapen graph. So let me show you what, um, what Desmos should look like, or what this, what this function should look like when I put it into Desmos. So I put my function in, and I clicked on the table function so that I could see some order here. And you'll notice that while I did have those first two points correct, the rest of my graph goes um, up more steeply than I have depicted in the node. Not a problem. We can correct that. That's the nice thing about being able to share, to uh, look at Desmos to see um, and check our answers. So I'm just going to quickly change my shape a little bit because I know it actually goes up more like this. Put an X there so you can know not ignore that one. All right, I'll try to do better on this one. Let's look at example two. I'm gonna use the same strategy, however. I'm gonna first think about what my parent function is. And again, the parent function is log base two of x. So I've got my two known points, one comma zero and two comma one. And I have to ask myself, what are the transformations being applied to this parent function? The first thing I notice is there is a horizontal transformation. In this case, because insiders lie, this horizontal translation left three. And I know that this changes my x values. I'm going to put that here. I also notice that there is no vertical stretch or compression. There is no reflection. 
And the only other transformation I need to take into account is the vertical translation up to. Now I can take these two transformations, apply them to the parent function ordered pairs that I already know, and I can come up with a shape for my graph. Okay, so let's look at this. The first thing I'm gonna change is the ordered pair one comma zero. I know that I'm changing the X values by subtracting three. So I'm gonna subtract three from the X value. And when I do that, I end up with negative two comma zero. And then I need, I'm gonna put an arrow down here so you know where I went. And then I need to apply vertical translation up to so I'm going to add to, to the y value, changes y value. And in this case, this would be a positive two. My x value is now negative two. And that is the new order pair that I get from doing these two transformations. I'm gonna do it again to this ordered pair. I'm gonna subtract three. Two minus three is a negative one. At least today it is. So I've trans transformed this ordered pair by applying the horizontal transformation down through uh, left three. And now I need to do my vertical translation, which is to add two, moving it up to one plus two is three. And so my new ordered pair after these two transformations is negative one, positive three. The two new ordered pairs that I'm gonna graph. I also notice that in this case, because there is a horizontal translation, my vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals negative 3. I'm going to color that in so we can see that this is the line I get close to but never cross. And I'm going to graph my two ordered pairs, negative 2, 2, and negative 1, 3. And if I need to, I can check the shape using Desmos and do a better job than I did last time. But my graph in general will look something like this. I know the domain is gated by the asymptote. So the smallest x value will get close to, but never touch, negative 3, but will go up forever to infinity. And my range mercifully is easy, negative infinity to infinity. And we have graphed two nice logarithmic functions this way. I feel like example three is pretty easy for us at this point. We're just identifying those transformations and we did that in examples one and two as well. We're gonna to remember to use our Harry Styles rocks VMAX. Order of transformations is important. The first thing I'm gonna do is note that there is a horizontal translation to the right five. And if we were graphing, that would change the x value. The next thing I notice is that there is a vertical stretch or compression. And in this case, because this number, the a value, is greater than one, this is a stretch. We say it's a vertical stretch by 11. There is no reflection and there is no vertical translation up or down. So those are the only transformations that occur on this graph. My horizontal translation dictates what my vertical asymptote is. And because I moved to the right five, my new x value bound is five. I'll get close to five, but never actually touch it. And then I will continue um, growing in the x direction to infinity. And I wrote a domain and range statement here. And that is not what it was asking for. That was asking for the domain here. Range is simple. Forgive me, guys. I don't know where my brain is today. But our vertical asymptote is at x equals 5. Looking at example 4, we can apply the same logic. I think it's just a problem with my left side, to be honest. The transformations, first I look for a horizontal transformation, and there is not one. If you want to, you can go ahead and write that down. 
I look for a vertical stretch or compression. In this case, my A value is between zero and one. So that indicates that this is a vertical compression. And I'm just gonna abbreviate, hope y'all don't mind. I notice there is a negative sign in front of my function, and that indicates that there is a reflection across the x-axis. And lastly, I see that there is a horizontal, uh, sorry, a vertical translation, and that is going to be down eight. My domain and range statements come next, and I know that my domain is bounded by the vertical asymptote, and because there is no horizontal translation here, I know that my vertical asymptote is the same as the parent function, x equals zero. So my domain will approach zero, but not quite touch it, but row in the x direction forever, my range is negative infinity to infinity. And we've identified the key components of that transformed function. The table below is one that I hope we are familiar with. I've gone ahead and filled it in here. This just shows you, in, with some examples, what different kind of logarithmic functions are with the particular transformation applied. Go ahead and fill this in in your own time. I'm not gonna belabor us by going through it step by step. If you have any questions, remember you can always reach out and contact me and I'll help in any way I can. Thanks for listening today and we'll see you next time.